Welcome back. In this video, I will go over the theory and practical aspects of using the BET method to determine the surface area of fine solids. The BET method is a procedure for determining the surface area of finely divided by solid by measurements of low temperature gas adsorption. Usually when we have a solid and when we have gas adsorption, we sometimes assume that it only occur on one monolith. Usually, for example, using the Langmuir isosum. However, that sometimes is not accurate because we might have multiple layers of gas absorption. Therefore, we use another isotherm called the BET isotherm. The BET isotherm says that the ratio between the volume of gas absorbed per unit area of the solid, this is the volume of gas absorbed. With respect to the volume of gas absorbed if it is a monolith, this is the real volume and this is the monolith volume. Its ratio is equal to a constant multiplied by the pressure, the partial pressure of adsorbate in gas divided by the saturation pressure at the temperature of the isotherm. We can linearize the BET isotherm so that the left term is y and we have here the slope so 1 over c times v of m this is m, and this part is x, and this whole constant is b. We have y equals to mx plus b, and we can plot it linearly, shown here. To determine the constant c and v of m, we would need at least two points to pinpoint the line, so that we can solve for that. Usually, the constant c is sufficiently large, though if it's in the denominator, then its high value will make intercept zero. If the intercept is zero, the line would pass through the origin zero, zero. So we only need another data point to determine the line. So this is called the single point method. If the constant c is sufficiently large, this whole term of b will go to zero. And at the right, the term C, because it is large enough, if it's minus by 1, it's comparatively nothing. So C minus 1 and C can cancel out. And then at the top, we have the same thing of P divided by P0. So this cancels out. So at the end, we have 1 over V times 1 minus P divided by P0 is equal to 1 over V of M. So if we rewrite this, we take the inverse of both sides, we will get that the monolayer volume is equal to the volume multiplied by 1 minus p divided by p0. If you write it in mass basis, denote it in x, it will be the mass of the monolayer is equal to the mass, the actual mass multiplied by 1 minus pressure divided by p0. The volume of adsorbate dissolved by sample V of desorption is equal to V of C, which is the calibration volume, multiplied by A divided by A of C, and A is the sample integrate reading, and A of C is the calibration integrated reading. And both of these are measurable. And these are measured by the instrument. The mass of adsorbate desorbs can be determined using the ideal gas law. We 
we can substitute the V desorption into the equation. So we have P of A multiplied by V of C times A divided by AC divided by R times T times M of A, where M of A is the molar mass. Remember on the last page, we determined that the mass of the adsorbate desorbed when the solid is covered by a single adsorbate monolayer X of M is equal to x multiplied by 1 minus p divided by p0. And since we have solved for x, we can plug it in, to get x of m. We can then calculate the total surface area of the solid by using the cross-sectional area of the absorbate molecule. And on the left, we have the amount number of molecules, where n of 0 is the Avogadro's number. To calculate the specific surface area, we divide the total surface area with the mass of the sample. In this experiment, the instrument will calculate s of t for us so this is a measured value you can also see that the integrator things it will also be taken into account by the instrument what we need to know is the mass of the sample that we want to measure before we put in the instrument and we can then calculate the specific surface area the instrument that we're using is, in the lab is called the Flowsorb Surface Area Analyzer. In the initial configuration, its power is off on the right side. Here is the power button. And the toggle valve should be on. There is also the toggle valve here. Make sure that you identify the toggle valve and the power valve so they're in the correct positions. We will have sample holders, that is this kind of glass tube here, that are installed at the degas test and cold trap locations. When you're in the lab, you'll see that the insulating container is installed only on the sample holder for the cold trap. So this is here, but this thing is not here. It's set on the side. And this thing here is a thermal pad that will generate heat so that the gas within the sample holder will come out. After making sure that the configuration is as described, we can then start our experiment. When starting up the instrument, first open up the inert gas flow with 30% nitrogen and 70% helium and then wait for five minutes before doing anything to the instrument itself. Once the inert gas flow has been established, we can then adjust the flow meter to the calibration mark. So here is the knob that we will be adjusting so that the, there will be a bead here, and this is the flow meter. We want the bead to be positioned at the calibration mark. You can then pour liquid nitrogen into an insulating container. When doing this, wear proper personal protective equipment, such as safety goggles. When pouring, it is okay if the liquid nitrogen drops to the floor, it will evaporate itself. But make sure that your legs and your feet are behind so that it does not get penetrated in your shoe. We can then pour the liquid nitrogen into the insulating container at the cold trap. Remember that the liquid nitrogen is far colder than the container, so it will evaporate off naturally. We will then wait for 10 minutes. After waiting, we can switch on the power switch, then wait for 30 minutes. In preparing the sample, weigh 0.02 grams of activated carbon in the sample holder and place the sample holder on the degas position and heat the sample holder with the heating mantle. Then wait for 15 minutes. 
This can be done at the same time while the instrument is starting up. To use the instrument, we must first calibrate the instrument. First, flush the gas syringe with the evaporated nitrogen gas above the liquid nitrogen at the degas position. So make the gas syringe above the surface of the liquid nitrogen. Just like when you would rinse a syringe with deionized water, you would just rinse the gas syringe with the gas nitrogen. After rinsing, fill the gas syringe with one milliliter of nitrogen gas. Because it is cold, wipe the needle tip free of frost and set the needle aside. The needle will need to equilibrate with the room temperature. Make sure you never point the needle to anyone and handle the needle safely. Then zero the instrument display using the coarse and fine zeros. Then switch to the surface area or SA mode and clear SA display. Now insert the needle at the inject position and inject the nitrogen gas at a moderate rate and withdraw the gas syringe. Wait until the reading is stabilized, then calibrate the instrument so that the SA is equal to 2.84 by adjusting the coarse and fine zeros. You can confirm the calibration by repeated injection of gas nitrogen if you deem necessary. After calibration, we're ready to make adsorption measurements. Start by exchanging the sample holders between D gas and the test position so that the sample is at the test position. Wait until the reading stabilize and then clear the SA display. And pour some liquid nitrogen into an insulating container that was set aside so that the nitrogen is deep enough to submerge the sample holder. And place the insulating container at the test position by submerging the sample holder with the liquid nitrogen and secure the container by flipping on the container holder. When the temperature is cooled down, the nitrogen gas starts to absorb onto the activated carbon. Wait until the reading is stabilized and then record the value of the assay display. The assay display is equal to the adsorption surface area. Then we can perform the desorption measurement by removing the insulating container by putting down the container holder. Then the nitrogen gas will start to desorb from the activated carbon. Wait until the reading is stabilized and then record the value of the assay display. And that value is equal to the desorption surface area. Make sure you report both the adsorption and desorption surface area in your lab report, but the industry standard is to use the desorption surface area as the final reported value. To shut out the instrument, first turn the power off, then remove the activated carbon from the sample holder, and then place the sample holder back on test position. As the last step, turn off the inert gas flow. When analyzing your results, remember that you measure the total surface area with adsorption and desorption value. You also measure the mass of the activated carbons. You want to calculate the specific surface area for adsorption and desorption by dividing the surface area with the mass that you use. Usually we will use the desorption data to report the specific surface area. In this video, I went over the theory for the BET method and went through the practical aspects of using the instrument to measure specific surface areas of fine solids.